Hey everyone, PJ here and welcome back. If you're looking for some tips to manage a successful remote team, you come to the right place. I'm the founder of a remote first company, so I've learned a thing or two about what it takes to successfully manage a remote team and build a successful business. So let's get into it. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I used to be pretty skeptical about remote work. Honestly, the idea of getting things done with a team scattered all across the globe sounded a little crazy to me at first. When I originally started Uscreen in 2014, remote wasn't my first choice, but it was the only way I could turn my vision into a reality. Fast forward a few years later and I still wasn't in love with it. But through trial and error, things finally started to fall into place. And now, six years in, I wouldn't change it for the world. Leading a remote team has proven to save money and increase productivity. And finding great people without having to worry about geographical location has also turned out to be a major perk. But here's the thing, remote works only if it's done right. To put things into perspective, it was only two years ago that we were just a team of 20 people. And today, I can say we're a fully remote team with more than 100 people working remotely at Uscreen. As you can see, it's taken me years of experience, but I've finally come up with my roadmap for remote work success. And let's not delay it anymore. Here are the top five tips for managing a successful remote team. Number one, recruit thoughtfully. First things first, doing great things isn't possible without a great team. It's just not possible. When building a team of people you're not going to see in person, one of the most important things to do is to take your time finding the right ones. You'll want to think about the roles, responsibilities, characteristics, and employees you're looking for. Here's my advice for hiring. First, the recruiting process should have several stages of interviews depending on the key things you want to uncover. At Uscreen, we use the first round to ask applicants to send in a video telling us about themselves. This is how we know they're committed and actually interested in the role, but it also tells us a lot about their personalities. Your next stage in the interview process has to be video. Never settle for the awkward audio only Zoom. You want to meet the person face to face. And lastly, knowing just their skill set isn't enough. You should be focusing on a few other things such as, are they a self starter? And are they able to work independently? Do you have a suitable work environment at your home? Because having a stable workstation is a must and not only for the individual success, but for the company itself. I can personally say that having a standing desk at my co-working space as well as my home is the best decision I've ever made. There are fewer distractions and having a consistent spot to work keeps me productive. I will say though, it's a bonus if you have experience working from home, but that's not a requirement. Getting these answers up front will tell you whether or not your candidate has the potential for long-term success at your company. Next up is number two, use communication tools wisely. If you want to streamline your team's workflow, it's important to have a solid internal communication plan. And while choosing the right communication tool does matter, how you use them is equally as important. In other words, providing a guidance on how to use your communication tools can save your team a lot of headaches. Let me show you what I mean. Slack is a great tool if you have questions that need answering right away, but it can also be a huge distraction. For this one, you'll want to keep side chats out of the main channel so you don't lose any important information in the thread. For more collaborative work, a Zoom meeting is usually the best option for making sure everyone's on track. At Uscreen, we ask that everyone keep their cameras on during calls because when working remotely, there's a clear risk of disconnect between people or even people and their work. Keeping the camera on will help your team feel more connected, engaged, as well as lower the risk of miscommunication as well. And that's because you put the voice to a facial expression, which helps a lot. Figure out a process that works for you and your team, and you'll be impressed by just how smoothly things can run. 
Number three, set clear guidelines and expectations. If you're playing a game with friends that are doing a bad job explaining the rules, you're probably not going to have much success. It's the same thing with remote teams. Clear communication of what's expected is even more important when you're not physically together. Your team should know exactly what's expected of them and why it's important. For example, over at Uscreen, we require specific working hours because we do a lot of cross collaboration. Basically, we want to make sure people in different time zones are overlapping by at least a few hours. Another expectation we have are weekly Zoom meetings. We ask that everyone shows up to ensure there's always time dedicated to touch base and synchronize tasks. With clear communications from the start, you'll be able to stay on target and keep things from falling through the cracks. Number four, make time for team engagement. Working from home means no water cooler conversations unless, of course, you count on talking to your dog or your cat. Totally cool if you do, by the way. But on a serious note, these types of quick conversations are important. Despite being remote, it's a good idea to dedicate some time for fun conversations as a team or even one-on-one. -on -one. Here at Uscreen, every few weeks, everyone gets a chance to do a 30-minute Zoom call with another team member. We get to talk about our favorite coffee, places we want to travel, pretty much anything that gets our brains time to relax, and we get to know more about the people we work with every day. And for managers and other executives, I absolutely recommend joining in. Last but not least is number five, support professional development. As I mentioned earlier, hiring the right people is a huge plus, especially if you give them the tools to even be better the kind of things that pay off in the long run. With remote work in particular, taking digital courses or other training programs is hugely beneficial because the majority of the work we do is well online. And it could even mean signing up for a course to get up to date on the latest internet tools. Because as we know, the internet is always changing. Think of it this way, your team is a machine. If you invest in upgrading the parts, the machine will work smarter and it gets stronger, not to mention the opportunity to get you certified or pursue professional interests makes people happy. So really, I'd call that a win-win. All right, everybody, I need to get back to the home office, but I really hope you found these tips useful. Your people are your most valuable assets, and I applaud you for taking the time to make sure you're giving them a thoughtful remote work experience. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button as well as subscribe to my channel and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.